Hello, in this presentation we will be discussing a trial balance. Objectives, at the end of this we will be able to define a trial balance, list components of a trial balance, and explain how a trial balance is used. When considering the trial balance, we first want to think about where the trial balance falls within the construction of the financial statements. In other words, what processes go before the trial balance, what goes after the trial balance, where does the trial balance fit into our process. Remember the ending goal, the ending process of the accounting being to compile the data in such a way to create the finance financial statements, those financial statements being the end product. Typically, if we're thinking about a linear process, then we're thinking about all the transactions that would happen during the month, those being recorded in terms of journal entries in the general journal. So we would be recording a bunch of journal entries, one looking like this. This is recording draws and checking account for a shareholder uh, who are a drawings from a sole proprietor being pulled out of the company. Then we would post all of those to the general ledger. So posting the general journal entries from the, the journal entries from the general journal to the general ledger, the general ledger being a list of all the accounts. So we're going to have a list of all accounts in order by assets, liabilities, equity, income, and then expense accounts. And we're showing all the activity for whatever period that we are now covering. Typically, we're looking at a month by month period or possibly a year's period. Whichever the case may be, we're going to see all this activity when considering the general ledger. This particular account being a debit to drawings. Here's the debit to drawings and a credit to cash. Here is the credit to cash. That shows all the activity. Now the problems that we will be working, and also when you're thinking about a computer system, note that this tends to happen more uh, all at the same time. Meaning, if we're working this by hand with paper and pencil, we would record all the journal entries and then record the posting of all those journal entries to the general ledger and then take those general ledger balances to create the trial balance. That's a useful way to think about it when considering how the process works. In reality, in a computer system and as much as possible in any system that we can put together, we would like to do more of this at the same time, meaning I would like to construct the journal entry and then post it and then record the uh, posting or the trial balance as we go rather than waiting till the end. In practice that's how we will look at it but it's useful to think of this process as a linear process as we're just going to do all of one, all of the journal entries and then all of the GL and then all of the trial balance when considering where the trial balance falls. Once we have these balances then we're going to take these ending balances here, these ending balances in all these accounts, the ending balance for cash, 6,160 for accounts receivable, 800 for the supplies, we got 325. We skip over here to, uh, to accounts payable. We have a credit balance represented here by the brackets, credits beating the debits of 1,890, notes payable credit balance of 8,000. We're just going to take those ending balances then to create the trial balance. The trial balance then is something that can really be a lot easier for us to look at and get a quick glance at just those ending balances eliminating all the detail. For example, in the cash account we will see on the trial balance 6,160 eliminating all of this detail within the trial balance and thereby being able to work with something that's a bit more manageable and can tell us some different types of data. So when we look at the trial balance then it could be formatted in a couple different forms, but we're typically always going to have the uh, accounts listed in the same order as we find them on the general ledger. That's going to be the assets in green in this case on top, then the liabilities, then the equity, then the revenue, then the expenses. Remember, if you remember that if you are talking about a sole proprietor, your equity will be capital and the drawings will typically be in the equity type area as well. If you're talking about a corporation, you're going to have common stock and you're going to have retained earnings. So you'll note here that up here in cash, we've got that 6,160. Again, we eliminated the detail here. Now, the reason we're going to do that, of course, is that now we can manipulate this data and do more things with it. At the end of the day, we're going to use this trial balance 
in order to construct the trial the uh, financial statements the end product but the trial balance also helps us to kind of see what is going on as we go meaning we can easily add up these assets and see what our total assets are see what our total liabilities are and and make some quick comparisons as we would do with the financial statements with just this trial balance note that most textbooks were actually going to introduce the trial balance before we introduce the general ledger why because the trial balance is a lot easier to look at right it's a lot easier to look at the trial balance even though if we think about the normal systematic format we look we do the trial balance after we do the general ledger the trial balance being constructed from the ending balances of here the general ledger but it's going to be easier to look at so we want to look at that first in practice note that the trial balance will typically be constructed by a computer system as we enter data into the computer system and a lot of times then in that format we're, we're looking at the end result the trial balance or even the financial statements and we typically want to go back in time for example if I want to know how we got to this 6160 in the, in the cash account if I'm saying hmm that looks too high or that looks too low then we oftentimes in that situation say we've already constructed the trial balance and then go back to the detail and say let's see the detail and to the general ledger how is this ending number created where am I where is my thinking going wrong and me thinking that this balance is too high or too low and we go back and find that detail so that's another way we can we can kind of consider where the trial balance lies it's it's used in order to construct the data it's done from the general ledger when considering it from a practice a practice standpoint in terms of how is a company doing oftentimes we start from the end trial balance the ending balances and then we can think about looking backwards to that general ledger note that the trial balance is a great cheat sheet meaning if you can have a cheat sheet for any kind of exams or anything like that or when you're just practicing with problems you want to start off with a trial balance as a good cheat sheet because even if it's not related to the problem that you are on it will give you a lot of information meaning it lists all the accounts so if you're picking some of these accounts that you may not really know such as unearned revenue it's kind of a, an account that takes a little while for most people to get and not only get in terms of I've now I know what unearned revenue is I've heard it a few times but then is it a debit or credit balance often a question we don't really know until but we can find it by looking at the trial balance we can see here that it's in the credit side it's going to be a credit balance and and the trial balance therefore is a great cheat sheet to have so I highly highly recommend getting used to a trial balance and having it in front of you whenever working any problems it'll tell you what the normal balances are for many accounts when working with smaller problems especially like multiple choice questions they're not going to give you uh, enough information as you would have in real life meaning in real life you would have access to a trial balance typically in a book problem you will not and so therefore if you can get one in front of you I highly highly recommend doing that note the key component of the trial balance being that the total assets equal the total uh, I mean sorry the total debits equal the total expenses which is the trial balance format the debit credit format of the accounting equation with the double entry accounting system of assets equal liabilities plus equity so if assets equal liabilities plus equity then it must be that total debits and total credits will be equal for all accounts involved so we broke this out in terms of debits and credits we can also do very quick calculations meaning if I especially if I'm in Excel I can just highlight these numbers in Excel and add them up give me total assets I can highlight these numbers add them up give me total liabilities I can subtract the revenue minus the expenses and get the net income very quickly I can just uh, add up the total equity and get those numbers very quickly we can actually maneuver around the trial balance a lot quicker than even the financial statements if it's formatted well and if it's in Excel even even faster uh, the reason we're going to convert these to financial statements is because we're trying to convert it to something where people don't know debits and credits but if you know debits and credits this is actually a lot more versatile in many ways than actually the financial statements you can basically pull a lot more information a bit quicker 
in, in this format sometimes than the financial statements. Note that I have represented the credits with brackets. That is not always the case. Depends on the textbook or the software you will see. Most textbooks will not represent credits with brackets, but many software programs will. And if you work with Excel, I highly, highly recommend, you know, considering uh, this kind of formatting because it will make your life much, much easier. And so I'm going to, I'm going to try to, um, to show that and try to convince people convince you of that if you're going to be working with debits or credits a lot you're going to want to work with excel you're going to want to learn excel you're going to want to make sure that you make excel part of your learning process and when learning excel it'll make your life much 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 easier if you start using formulas and putting credit brackets around the credits will help to do that the first example of that is to if we were trying to convince a trial condense a trial balance down we can do so in this format and note what this does for us it's going to convert the trial balance from just uh, two columns to one column that seems like not a big deal right now but when we get to later worksheets where we're going to basically be looking at the activity that happens and then an ending trial balance that would be six columns here <laughs> and if we can convince condense those down we're getting down to three columns so the, the fact that this will increase by two columns each time we add something and this will increase by only one column each time we add something is really going to save time down the road as you'll see when we when we start making worksheets. You'll see worksheets in the book in, in textbooks that will you know have like 10 you know 10 columns and that's a little uh, unnecessary. We'll also see some complexity in formulas where if we were doing it by hand it might be useful to do if we had a calculator but if we're doing it in Excel something I highly 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 recommend we get used to then uh, then the formulas will be a lot more simple if we don't have the two columns and instead use this format here so I'm gonna try to convince us of this and show us in, in the problems how this will work and how to convert how to convert this back to this and back and forth as needed and that's a typical kind of thing that we will be using in practice too and we're going to have, in this case, the debits are going to be just the positive numbers. The credits we're going to represent with brackets. Excel seeing those as negative numbers. And therefore, we know that, of course, if the debits equal the credits, then if I subtracted debits and credits, that would equal zero. So if we then make the credits zero, the negative numbers, we can check our balance simply by summing up this row in Excel. Meaning, summing up would take all the positive numbers minus all the negative numbers and that will show us we are in balance by it being zero. The pros of that is it's going to give us a really quick indication if that's any other number than zero we're out of balance as opposed to us having to kind of look at these two where we could kind of miss where we're out of balance. The con of that is of course that we can't define exactly how many debits or credits we have but typically that's not the important information we're looking at here. The total debits and credits don't give us any information about how the company's doing it just tells us whether we're in balance or not. The number that we want to know, here's net income at the bottom, a number much easier to calculate right here. We can just add it to the trial balance if we want to, if we use this format, because it'll just calculate. That's the calculation of this credit minus these debits, meaning that is income. Now, that is not a loss. Now, that's going to be what we have to do whenever we learn debits and credits is to understand the difference between what a debit and a credit is as opposed to the functions of plus and minus. And there's no way to get around that, whether we use uh, formulas with, a, with brackets and negative numbers as credits or not, you're gonna have to add and subtract debits and credits. So the, the idea of, of not having uh, negative numbers or not having bracketed numbers, you, you know, reducing the problem of having uh, to, to distinguish between debits and credits and plus and minus I don't think it's going to work. Really, we're going to have to, no matter what we do, we're going to have debits and credits. We're going to be adding and subtracting debits and credits. And we're going to have to keep straight in our mind, what does a debit and credit mean? Am I looking at something in terms of debits and credits? Or am I looking at something in terms of a plus and minus operation format? And so we're going to have to keep, keep that straight as we go. And we'll do that by just having a bunch of problems that we're going to work through in order to get that information. We are now able to define a trial balance, list components of a trial balance, and 
explain how a trial balance is used.